In this video, we will be focusing on the concepts of equilibrium and Le Chatelier's principle. We will be focusing on six different equilibrium reactions, and by varying the products and reactants, we can see how Le Chatelier's principle drives a reaction to one side or the other. By adding or removing products and reactants, we can drive the reaction towards one side. If by chance we add a reactant, it will drive the reaction to make more products. If we add additional products, it would drive the reaction in reverse to generate more reactants. The first equilibrium reaction involves the equilibrium between chromate and dichromate ions. This reaction will involve mixing potassium chromate, which is yellow, and sulfuric acid, which is colorless. Upon mixing, the sulfuric acid reacts with the chromate ion to form the orange dichromate ion. The equilibrium reaction has shifted from the yellow chromate ion in the reactants to the orange dichromate ion in the products. When this equilibrium mixture is react, reacted with sodium hydroxide, a competing reaction occurs. This causes the solution to change color to a yellow solution, indicating that a reaction had taken place. In this reaction as a whole, the yellow potassium chromate reacts with colorless sulfuric acid to form the orange dichromate ion. When additional reaction takes place with sodium hydroxide, the orange color dissipates and forms the yellow chromate ion. The second equilibrium reaction to investigate is the precipitation reaction of barium chromate. The initial reactants appear as yellow potassium chromate solution and clear and colorless barium chloride solution. Upon mixing, the dull pale yellow precipitate of barium chromate is formed. With the precipitate of barium chromate formed, the addition of hydrochloric acid causes the precipitate to dissolve and the solution to appear a golden orange color. Overall, the clear and colorless barium chloride reacts with the yellow potassium chromate solution to form a pale yellow precipitate of barium chromate. Upon addition of hydrochloric acid, the barium chromate precipitate dissolves and the resulting solution is a clear orange color. The third equilibrium reaction looks at the precipitation and solubility of sodium chloride. Sodium chloride has a solubility limit of 5.4 molar. This means that at 5.4 molar, the solution is saturated and no additional ions are able to be dissolved by the water. 
The sodium chloride solution initially is a clear colorless liquid. Upon addition of 12 molar hydrochloric acid, the chloride concentration is higher than the 5.4 molar solubility of sodium chloride. The result is a white precipitate that forms. When the same compound of hydrochloric acid is added, but at a lower concentration of three molar, which is below the solubility of sodium chloride, there is no visible change in the reaction. Overall, the concentration of chloride ions has therefore decreased as it would be below 5.4 molar but above 3 molar. The fourth reaction looks at the equilibrium between iron 3 plus ions and hydroxide ions. This reaction occurs in two steps as there is both a precipitation reaction and a reaction which dissolves the precipitate. Initially, both the iron nitrate solution and sodium hydroxide solution appear clear and colorless. If the iron nitrate solution had a higher concentration, the color could be perceived as a pale orange. Upon addition of sodium hydroxide to the iron nitrate solution, a dark brown or orange precipitate appears. This is the formation of the precipitate of iron 3 hydroxide. This precipitation reaction can then be investigated further. Upon addition of hydrochloric acid, the solid dissolves and the solution becomes a clear yellow solution. This yellow solution comes from the complexation reaction of iron three ions with chloride ions to form the iron chloride complex. In addition to the precipitate dissolving in highly acidic solutions, by adding additional sodium hydroxide, the precipitate will also appear lighter and eventually will also dissolve. The reaction that is occurring is the dissolving of the iron 3 hydroxide precipitate and the formation of iron tetrahydroxide complex ion. Overall, this reaction of nearly colorless iron nitrate solution and colorless sodium hydroxide produces the dark brown precipitate of iron 3 hydroxide. With addition of hydrochloric acid, the precipitate is dissolved and the iron reacts with chloride ions to form the yellow iron tetrachloride complex. Last, with addition of further sodium hydroxide, the brown precipitate dissolves on the formation of iron tetrahydroxide complex ion. This ion is soluble and causes a pale orange solution to appear. In the fifth equilibrium reaction, iron 3 nitrate is again used and react it with potassium thiocyanate. The reaction 
produces the complex ion of iron thiocyanate. As with the previous reaction, both the iron nitrate and the potassium thiocyanate are clear and colorless solutions. However, upon reaction, an intense deep red color is produced, which is signature for the, potass for the iron thiocyanate complex. Because the solution is so intensely colored, for the additional reactions, we are diluting the samples with water. The resulting color is a pale orange color. With the colors now dilute, you can much more closely monitor the change in the reaction. With additional iron nitrate, the solution again seems to get a darker shade. With the addition of additional potassium thiocyanate, the color also seems to get more intense, even more so than when adding the iron nitrate. Lastly, upon addition of sodium hydroxide, the color dissipates with the formation of the iron tetrahydroxide complex. Overall, the clear and colorless solutions of iron-3 nitrate and potassium thiocyanate react to form an intense red colored solution of iron thiocyanate. With additional iron nitrate or potassium thiocyanate, the reaction shifts to produce more of the intensely colored product. With the addition of sodium hydroxide, the color fades in preference of a side reaction. The sixth and final equilibrium reaction is the equilibrium of silver chloride. Silver chloride and hydrochloric acid are both clear and colorless solutions. Upon mixing, an intense white precipitate is formed with the formation of silver chloride. Over time, this reaction mixture settles to separate the solid and liquid components. To the liquid component, additional silver nitrate is added. The continued formation of a precipitate indicates that the silver ion was the limiting reactant in the initial reaction. To the mixture of silver chloride, concentrated ammonia is added. The ammonia disrupts the solid, causing the, the precipitate to dissolve. The initial solid component can also react with concentrated ammonia solution to dissolve the solid completely. This is due to the fact that there is a competing reaction with the silver ions, causing them to react preferentially 
with ammonia in place of the chloride. This overall shifts the reaction to the silver ions as opposed to the silver chloride solution. To the very last vial, nitric acid is added at the end. The nitric acid reacts with the ammonia hydroxide. As the ammonia reacts with the nitric acid, it is no longer available to bind with the silver ion. This causes an increase in the silver ion concentration and therefore a drive to the product of silver chloride. Overall, clear and colorless silver nitrate and hydrochloric acid are reacted together to form the white precipitate of silver chloride. The liquid itself still contains chloride ions, as the silver ions were the limiting reactant. With additional silver, this causes more formation of the silver chloride precipitate. The precipitate itself is disrupted by ammonia and dissolves, releasing silver ions and therefore having them bind to the ammonia. Last, the addition of nitric acid will react with the ammonia to form the ammonium ion. This releases the silver back into the solution where it can continue to react with chloride ions, resulting in the precipitation of silver chloride.